In this video, we're going to focus on how we can hide and show our data labels here. You can see here we have them, but if I click on this, there we are. And then we start to hide them. And if I click back on it to check mark them, and there they appear. And as I keep on playing with this, we can do this very quickly. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to show and hide the data labels plugin in Chart.js. So the first thing what I need to do here, of course, is to get our default code, which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started. This specific link, which is also in the description box. Then I'm going to scroll down here and copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy all of this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. That explains it all. I'm going to paste this all in here. And once I did that, I'm going to cut out this title here and put it in there. Save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have this. What I want to do next is, of course, start to put in the plugin here. So how do we do that? We go to cdnjs.com or any other CDN that you can find and search for Chart.js plugin data labels. I'm going to copy this specific, uh, this specific, sorry, this specific script here, which is the Chart.js data labels plugin code. Copy that, scroll down here, and then make sure you will put it below or after the Chart.js library. Chart.js library needs to load first, and then we want to have this item here, which is our Chart.js plugin data labels. If I save this now, refresh, nothing happens yet. Why? Because we didn't activate the plugin. So let's scroll down here all to the bottom. In here in the options, I'm going to say comma, I'm going to say plugins, I'm going to put it in a bracket, and I'm going to put in here the command chart data labels. If I save this now, now you can see it works nicely. All right, so now we have this. And what I want to now is make a simple checkbox here above. So I'm going to say here input type checkbox. And then what I can say here, for example, is show slash height data labels. So once I did that, what I want to do here is also a functionality, basically on change. So when the value of this input or the checkbox changes from check to uncheck, we want to do something. So we're going to say here, we can say here, let's say show data labels. Then here, we put in here a parameter, which will be, or sorry, the argument, which is this. And this refers to this input here, basically the element that we click on. Next, what I want to do, by default, I want to show this, meaning it should be here as checked. So just do it like that. If I save this now, refresh, there we are, it shows it, and then if I click on this, right now nothing truly happens, because we don't have any function here active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, scroll down here to the bottom, and put in here some enters, all right. Then I'm going to say a function, and I'm going to say show labels, and we can say here, uh, checkbox, which is basically the variable, and then if I do here console law and just say here checkbox, save that, refresh, open up developer tab, and then if I click here now, there you are, you can see here it's being checked. You can see here we get the full element. So we don't have to do here dot value, that's not necessary because we need to have the full element. Because if you would do full uh, dot value, what will happen is it will give always the same response, no matter what. So we don't want that. So we don't need that at all. So what I want to do now is, and that is very important, is basically in the checkbox, we can say dot check. If I save that one and refresh, we should see here now false and true. And this is the value we're going to work with. So what I'm going to say here now is I create a if statement. So that if the checkbox dot checked and I'm going to say here equals or equals strict true if that is the case let's say here console log we're going to say here do something save that and refresh let's see if this works nicely all right do something everything is true is do something so what I want to do now is basically this we can see here we have this plugin here and what I want to do is this item here indicates if it's active or not active. Basically, because of this, it will trigger and draw the items here. 
So if I want to hide it, I just need to remove this item here so it will not be registered or activated. So what I'm going to do here is very simple. How do we get here? We'll go from my chart to config. And from config, we go all down here immediately to plugins. So I'm going to say here, config, oh, sorry, not my chart, dot config dot plugins. Then I'm going to say here equal what exactly, or sorry, not even equal. I want to, well, in this case, if check equals true, I want to say here push because if we, if it's check, it must be unchecked previously or prior to that, meaning before it was hidden. So if I check it, it should now show. So what I'm going to do here is to push basically this variable in here. So once I did that, I need to do exactly the opposite. And the opposite is here, we say else, and then we're going to do here. And push is basically an array command to add something in an array. So we copy that. And then we're going to say here else would be not push, but shift. What does shift do? Remove a value at the uh, well, at the beginning, at the very beginning of the array. In this case, we only have one value, so that should be fine. If you have multiple values, different story, of course. So I save this, refresh, and now if I click on this, all right, this starts to work, but of course here it doesn't work yet. Why? I'm going to put in an enter. I'm going to say my chart dot update to update everything. Save that, refresh, and now as you can see, we can activate or hide it nicely. And if I click on it, it will work absolutely wonderful. And that's basically how you can do that. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to learn more about the Chart.js Data Labels plugin, in that case, I highly recommend you to check out my Chart.js Data Label plugin series where I cover over 19 different videos about the topics here. You can explore everything what Chart.js Data Labels has to offer.